Hi there. Uh, today we are here, Agents of Change, with a special topic, AI in social work. Uh, this is Alex Mitchell. If you're listening on audio, um, you may be seeing us on YouTube as well. And today I'm with, of course, Megan Mitchell, founder of Agents of Change, uh, Continuing Education and Test Prep, and Ernesto Bejarano, who is a founder also of Social Work Magic, Social Work Mentor, among many other things. And so I'm going to pass the mic around and let these two introduce themselves a little bit more, and then we'll jump into this really exciting topic that we're happy to bring you today. So Ernesto, I'll, I'll hand the mic to you first to provide a little bit more about yourself. All right. Well, thank you, Alex and Megan. I'm really happy to be here, and I want to thank you both for inviting me. I'm familiar with your work and your platform, and it's a it's an honor, a privilege to be here with both of you today. Um, yeah, as you said, you you pronounce my name properly, which is not always easy to do. My name is Ernesto Bejarano. I um, uh, some people may know me as social work mentor or see me with my work with Social Work Magic. Um, and I'm I've been in the world of social work for the past twenty seven, almost twenty eight years now. Um, and I've been fortunate, I feel, to have done a lot of different things in social work. Um, I'm currently in child welfare, but I've done school social work and um, evaluation, um, drug and alcohol. So I've been able to see a lot of different areas in social work. And when about a year ago now, when I first saw um, artificial intelligence, AI, I had heard of it before, but when I really dug deep into it, I got super interested about its implications on social work. And so that's kind of um, where I got started working in this area. And I think that's what obviously we'll be talking about today. So thank you again, and I'm happy to be here. All right, well, welcome Ernesto. And then Megan, I'll hand the mic to you now to introduce yourself. Yes, yeah, similar to Ernesto, I feel like as social workers, we have our hands in a lot of different areas. So mm -hmm. I have been in social work for about 11 years now. And I have worked in a variety of settings, but mostly with children. So I was a school social worker for many, many, many years. Now I have moved into private practice. So I do clinical social work with children and teens. And I primarily focus on those that might have executive functioning challenges, are somewhere on the neurodivergent spectrum. So I do a lot of cool work there. Um, also started Agents of Change in the pandemic that has accelerated very quickly. We're really excited about how much growth we've seen there. And then um, I'm also, if I'm not doing enough, I am in a doctorate program at University of Buffalo. And how I kind of got into the tech world is there's a big, in, there's a big um, there's a big push for tech in this program. So we've taken classes on tech. So that's kind of how I got interested in AI. It was brought up in my courses. And um, Ernesto, we can talk about this a little bit more, but my professors really pushed us to see that we need to be on the forefront of technology. Social workers sometimes take a back seat. We're sometimes the last to adopt technologies. But really, we have such a big opportunity to be a presence in the tech space and bring our expertise because I'm sure Alex will get into it with some of our questions, but a lot of people in the tech space don't have a code of ethics. They don't have a guidebook to help them make informed decisions. So I think we really have a big opportunity to not only use AI in social work, but create programs and create spaces that are ethically sound for our clients as well. Great. Thank you, Megan. Thank you again, Ernesto. I think we have the two right people for this topic. So I'm super excited to, to dive into these questions with you both. Uh, by way of brief introduction for me, I'm Alex Mitchell again. I know some folks at Agents of Change have seen me pop up in videos and study groups from time to time. Um, I do a lot of behind the scenes at Agents of Change, but my background is much more in the technology space. Um, so I've worked as what's called a product manager for really the past 10 years, um, working closely with software engineers, folks who write code for computers, uh, ranging from travel to website builder to insurance online. So many, many different domains. Um, uh, but always with kind of the common thread of data and, and AI in many of those applications too. So I've seen these technologies be built behind the scenes. Now, as we know, in the last year, they've really come to the forefront. They've become a lot more visible, a lot more usable, um, a lot more exciting and terrifying, depending on who you ask. Um, so I'm excited to, to help 
bring a little bit of light there from the technology perspective as as I guide this conversation today. So welcome, uh, Megan and Ernesto, and I think we can jump in. So first question, I'd love to hear what you each think about the intersection of AI and social work. Um, obviously, this is you know, pretty new, Ernesto, you mentioned, you know, you've been there for, for about a year involved. I know Megan hinted at it a little bit in her introduction, but we'd just like to see, you know, where do you think AI fits in? How do you just think about that intersection of, of these two fields? And Ernesto, I'll, I'll come to you first. And if you also, maybe Ernesto, want to talk about the book you wrote recently, that might be a nice fit in as well here. Okay. Well, thank you. Um, yeah, I think, um, you know, as you mentioned, it, it as at least as far as myself as a social worker, maybe Alex, as a tech guy, you might have had a, a more of an introduction a little earlier to AI, but really it's the intersection between AI and social work for me, as far as what I've been able to ascertain is there's not much yet. The intersection is just in the early stages, I think. And so, you know, I think as Megan, you alluded to when you both started Agents of Change during the pandemic, um, a lot of social workers, some of us were already there, but a lot more social workers started to get comfortable with online stuff, with technology. I mean, they were forced to, I guess, essentially. Um, and so people became more comfortable with technology, but particularly with AI, I think along with that comfortability came um, concerns or challenges to using technology and social work because of the kind of work that we do and the obligations that we have. And that's, you know, a good thing. I, I think that the skepticalness, the, um, you know, those who are skeptical, I think that's a good thing that we need to have that uh, just because of, again, the work that we do. But my kind of take on it is that in my 27-ish years in social work, I've, I've gotten frustrated oftentimes because I hear a lot of it can't be done. You know, we can't use this technology. We can't use this software. We can't do that. And maybe that's accurate sometimes, but I, what I would like to hear more is how can it be done? You know, how, okay, there's some challenges here. We got to think about confidentiality, but how can we make this work? And so that's what, you know, as we begin this intersection, I'm hoping that the field, our colleagues kind of take on that mindset, not it can't be done, but how it, how can it be done? And I, I'm, I'm a little optimistic because I kind of have seen just with regards to AI, individual social workers and even the NASW um, kind of realizing that AI is, is here to stay. It's not going anywhere. Um, and so they're at least in my mind kind of beginning down that path of of kind of the intersection between social work and, and AI in particular. Yeah, that's a great answer, Ernesto. And then maybe Megan, I'd love to hear your perspective. And then Ernesto, I'd like to come back to you um, to just learn a little bit more about the book. And if that's kind right. of the topic you cover, is that introduction or if it gets more into the details, let's kind of come back to that in a second. But Megan, we'll get your answer first. How how are you seeing this in, in the field today uh, between AI and social work? Are you seeing a lot of folks adopted? Are you seeing not much yet, but maybe something on the horizon? Um, what What's your take? Yeah, I'm a little biased because for my doctorate, we have to find these networks. So I'm very much around tech people. But then when I go out of my bubble and talk to others, um, Alex and I have done even a webinar. People are terrified of this. They're like, I don't even, I've heard of it and I don't want to touch it. And we really encourage people to just have an open mind. We're not saying AI is the end all be all, but have an open mind to it and know that there's a middle ground, right? Tech can be positive, tech can be negative, but it's how we use it, I think that's important, right? If you're just putting in prompts into chat GPT and copy and pasting them, that's not helpful, right? You really still have to have the human aspect of it. So that's where I think that social workers can come in is providing that humanistic perspective to this technology piece. So um, I would, and I would say, I mean, when did chat GPT, 2023 was really the year of chat GPT. Um, so I think that like Ernesto said, it's here and it's here to stay and whether we like it or not. So we should embrace it because if we don't, we're going to be behind the curve on things. I use AI a lot, um, just kind of to throw this out to you all people listening, our listeners, just look around your room. How many pieces of technology do you have? Do you have an Alexa? Do you have a smartphone? Do you have a watch? Those are all pieces of technology that we use without even knowing it. 
And I will say AI is in our world and we probably don't even know it. Netflix recommendations, right? You, what you might be interested in, that's AI. Um, when you're typing on Gmail and it kind of fills in some of the, the text for you, that's AI. So I think that once we point out to people that it's already here, they're a little bit more open to being like, oh, you're right. It is part of my life and how can I embrace it? And how can, I think people really, it's just learning about what it does and what it doesn't do and how we can use it in an ethical way, I think. Um, so I'm hoping that this pushes some of us forward. Um, I'd also be really interested to see how schools of social work are embedding it into their curriculum. Because I mean, it's a different time than when I went to grad school and I'm sure you two Ernesto, like this was not a discussion whatsoever. <laughs> Everything was paper and pencil and that was how you do things. And that's just not the way that the world works now. So I think it's emerging and I'm excited to see what we as social workers can do um, regarding this in the space. Yeah, I'm I'm really a thousand percent on the same page of just about everything you said there, Megan. And <clears throat> just thinking back about grad school, I, I started grad school a little later than I wanted to in life. But uh, you know, when I did get into grad school, I, it was at a time where I think like maybe one of my classes even allowed us to use a laptop in class. Like we we laptops were forbidden in class, and so that's kind of just to give you an idea of how much. Tech, how welcome technology was in at that time, at least at my um, grad school. But you know, just to get back to your question, Alex, about the book that you mentioned. So I do have uh, this book here that I put together and put out recently. Um, and the reason why I I wanted to do that was I've always been frustrated, just kind of by the lack of practical tools that social workers have at their disposal to out in the field or just working day to day. Um, I've uh, Although I'm not necessarily a tech person, I've always been interested in tech and how we can integrate it into social work. And I've just been frustrated that we don't always have that. Megan, you said earlier how people, social workers often like the last place to get so, to get technology. And I always have experienced that too. So when I heard about AI and I just one weekend, I think I just went on a deep dive and I started playing with it. And I really thought that it was something that we as social workers could benefit from, particularly those that we work with could benefit from it as well. Um, and so I kind of set about using whatever technology experience that I had to build this app that I um, have or, or a application that would allow people to, I, in my mind, at least the goal was to allow people to have easier access to a social work kind of specific tool that they could use for AI. You could certainly use ChatGPT or some of the other stuff that was or is out there. But the one I designed, I tried to do it with social workers in mind. So it's a little bit specialized in the background as best as I could do as a social worker. Um, and I developed that tool. And once people started using it, talking about it, I started seeing discussions online. I realized that there were so many people that didn't have a clue really about AI. And like you said, Megan, pe people were terrified. And and some posts that I even made on social media, I got some really awesome comments, but I got some comments also that were almost personal towards me about creating this or thinking about this or whatever. So, um, you know, I realized people need to know more about this. I think it's a in large part, it's a lack of understanding of what it is, what it can do, how we can responsibly use it. And so for that reason, I, it's kind of what, what motivated me to work on, on the book to give just a basic understanding of what AI is, how does it work, um, you know, how can it be applied or is it being applied in social work so that people could look at it, read it, and then with hopefully a little bit more of an informed opinion or informed um, perspective form then their opinion, which way, how they really feel about AI. And just lastly, I think another reason why I wanted to um, have this book available to people is because like you said, Megan, in the schools of social work, I totally agree with that too, is that these new, our new colleagues that are coming into the field with us, they are not coming into the same world that any of us have been used to, and they need to be prepared. They need to have the tools to jump into this because it is here and it will only, I think, exponentially grow. So um, I think that I'm hoping that 
there may be some schools of social work who see this book, who their students are able to read it, and they can have those discussions in class, and it could facilitate some back and forth so that when the so new social workers come out, they've had an opportunity to kind of work through this technology and 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 know how they want to use it or not once they actually jump into the field. So that's a little bit about my motivations for uh, you know the book and where I hope it is able to help. Yeah, that's that's great, yeah. Ernesto. I know you held that book up briefly. Um, for the folks on on audio, the title is Artificial Intelligence for Social Workers, Everything You Need to Know to Get Started. Um, we'll also include a link to that on Amazon um, in the description. We'll also include a link to um, you know some of Ernesto's projects and, and businesses too, so you can find um, the kind of social work uh, catered uh, chat GPT type you know, uh, tool that he mentioned briefly there as well. So we'll link these all in the description um, so you can you know explore them more. Um, on your own time, but but thank you for sharing that. And I'd like to kind of follow up on on a few of those topics. And maybe Megan, I could come over to you. Um, I know a lot of folks who may be listening. Again, just given the nature of of what we just kind of highlighted with social workers, maybe not being as exposed uh, to to AI or ChatGPT, either you know by their own decision or or otherwise. We talked about some of the ways that AI is already in you know, our lives through recommendations, as you talked about, Megan, through things you see on TikTok or as you're scrolling, all those, you know, driven by AI through even the way, as you mentioned, you know, autocomplete happens um, in, in Gmail or something like that, or Google. Um, Megan, maybe you could share like one or two examples, um, you know, if I can put you on the spot for where you have found some value in the domain of social work or where other social workers could potentially find some value just to, again, open some people's minds to maybe where these tools could fit in for them as, as a practitioner out there in the field. Yeah, so I will highlight my use of chat GPT um, and how I use it. I use it a lot to get ideas. So for me, I have a lot of ideas. My brain is full of ideas, but I have trouble organizing those ideas. So I use chat GPT, for example, I will say, um, I'll feed it some language that says, can you give me some ideas of activities to do in session with um, young teens that are struggling with anxiety? It will pop out some things. And the tech that you, the, the what you feed it, it, it gets smarter the more you put in. So then from there, I will say, okay, um, this, can you make it more art-based? And then it might give you an art prompt. And there's obviously I'm not giving away any details that would, you know, be identifying my client that would be breaking confidentiality. I keep it very broad. So that is a big thing is when you're using AI, you do not want to feed any identifying information into a chat GPT type thing. You will get, please do not do that. Please, please, please. If you take anything from this confidentiality is going to be the most important thing with tech. There's a lot of AI, like I mentioned, that we don't know about, and it goes into this cloud of we don't know where. So you got to be very, very careful. So I use it more in broad strokes, right, to make my life easier. Yes, I could go find books and pull different things, but that just saved me so much time to plan for a session. Um, I've also used it for sand tray prompts, right, right, five sand tray prompts um, that would help a client with conflict. And I put the age of the client, maybe an eight-year-old client. I've also, um, I have some clients, I work with kiddos, so they have some very um, deep interests, right? That I have some clients that love Star Wars. I know a little bit about Star Wars, but not the level of details that these clients do. So I can just ask ChatGPT, give me a rundown of all the characters I need to know in Star Wars, right? So then I can build that rapport with a client right? Because I know I'm in a little bit more informed now. I can connect with that client because, and the client knows that I've done my homework, right? I took the, the opportunity to learn a little bit more about this interest of the client. So I use ChatGPT a lot just to help generate ideas. It's almost like I bounce my ideas off of it. And so that's one way that I think that it can be used. I don't know if other people use design platforms such as Canva. There's tons of AI in that, right? It can it even has an AI feature. You can say, I, I'm looking for some designs that are around whatever it is that it is around a tech-based presentation. And there's AI management that can help produce ideas for you, can produce images for you. So I, I just think that it helps us 
with efficiency, right? It is not that we're we're taking out our own brain of it, right? We are just, for me, I would say I use it as an idea generator, right? It helps me generate ideas. And then from there, I get some ideas of where to move. So that's some ways I use it in Canva and also in chat GPT. I mean, there's a bunch of different ways. There's art now that can be made with AI. You just feed it some text. It's really actually cool. So I encourage you, if you have like no idea about AI, do a quick Google search and see what's out there. There's some fun stuff to play around with. And that's how you really learn is to use it, right? So don't take our word for it. Use it yourself and see see how um, it works for you. So those are a couple case examples of how I use it. I think those are some some great examples, Megan. I, hopefully um, some folks who are listening can kind of relate to those and it's getting some the kind of juices flowing a little bit, some brainstorming going on um, for things they could think of. And Ernesto, maybe I'll come to you with a similar question. Have you seen certain use cases or certain things work especially well or or not well maybe um, as as folks in this you know social work field are are using AI or you're using it yourself? Sure. Yeah, I, I definitely use it as Megan mentioned as an idea generator. It's 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 great for that. Um, I'll, I'll just you know another way. I'll kind of go to the other end of the the spectrum. And that one way that I use it, um, I in my day to day job, I supervise a team of social workers, um, and so what I find myself using it for quite often is almost like a validation tool. So a couple of quick examples. One. There was a particularly challenging case that um, I was I had a consultation or I consulted um, one of my workers came in and they wanted to talk about this case. And so we talked for about a good two hours as we normally would. And as we're used to as social workers, just going back and forth, th thinking about all the different perspectives, all the possibilities, just, you know, running it through and coming up with a, a plan. So then kind of out of curiosity, the first time I, I just kind of typed in again without any identifying information just typed in the scenario and I asked it um you know what would the plan be or I, I don't remember exactly but I, I was myself and my um the worker were kind of shocked and excited when what it spit out was almost exactly what we had come up with in the past two hours of discussion as social workers so that goes back to kind of maintaining the humanistic aspect of our work because this is not a plug and play kind of thing but it was it did feel good because when you see some of the responses that chat gpt or the tool that i developed or whatever when you see the responses you can kind of see that it's not just like it's it's real the answers are legitimate if you know anything about social work you can quickly ascertain that these are legitimate answers for the most part so that was one instance and then there's another tool that I've kind of been working on or, or part of AI that allows you to, in a sense, kind of chat with a, a PDF document and, and kind of have a discussion with a document, if that makes any sense. And so um, there was a case we have the work that I do. There's a a for lack of a better term, a policies and procedures kind of manual that guides everything in this particular area. And so there was, again, one of those gray areas that's not lined up exactly um, as we would want it to be in that in that policy manual. And so we, again, discussed it as a team. We were trying to determine whether this case, where it fit within the regulations. And we came up with our best guess. And then, again, I plugged it into um, the tool. And what it spit out, it gave us the kind of citation within the document where this information actually was. And then it kind of did an analysis and it said, based on this information, the document does not specifically say that you have to do X, Y, and Z, but given the scenario, you might want to consider. So it was like, it was a very thorough analysis, including kind of the citations from within the document that allowed us to then kind of weigh that against what we had come up with and come up and kind of settle on a a decision that we felt was very well informed. So um, the the possibilities of how you can integrate uh, AI into your work and do it responsibly, I think are, are basically limitless. Yeah. Ernesto, I just want to touch on that real quick. I have used different PDF things too. As a grad student, that's so helpful when I have 15 readings to read a week. And I'm really getting in the weeds of what are the method methods, right? And I can use that tool to be like, 
you know, can you tell me what the statistical significance was of this? And it will pull me to that part of the document so I can draw my attention there. It's not that I'm not reading it. It's just helping me synthesize all of this information. So I, I really love that. And I don't know if you would agree with this or not. So I feel like for me personally, AI is making me a better social worker because things that I might've put off, cause I'm like, oh, I don't have time for that. I'm able to use AI to go deeper into these areas. So I'm giving more attention to more areas because I have time to do that. And I have, if you told me read this document and you know, it's a 35 page document, I probably don't have time to do that. And AI allows me to find the key points. This is just for this example, but it has allowed me to become more um, tuned into certain areas that I would have probably just said, you know, I don't have time to do that and moved on to the next thing. Yeah, I agree. And, and even, you know, uh, uh, quite often, uh, again, some of the AI that you'll see, it pretty much it can validate what you already knew as a social worker. But there, that's not to say I have a few years of experience and there's often points or or things that it brings up that I'm like, oh, yeah, I didn't think about that. That's actually and then I can integrate that into my thinking as a human. But mm -hmm. it does sometimes even point out perspectives or or points of interest, I guess you would say that on any particular situation that I may have, I would have known about probably just as a social worker, but it just, it didn't pop into my awareness until chat GPT or the tool that I have pointed it out. And then it, you know, I can, I can build from there. So, so yeah, I, I think it, even at this late stage in my career, it's making me a, a better social worker. And in turn, that's making the people that I work with and the people that I supervise better social workers. And at the end of the day, bottom line, it's providing, it's the end result is improved services, more time spent with those that we're serving. And so that's really, after all this discussion that we're having, what we're trying to get at. How can we improve services? How can we be more efficient? How can we be more effective in the work that we do with those individuals and families that we work with? And I think AI, if used responsibly, does yeah. get us there. Yeah, I, I think agree. you both brought up a, a ton of great points that again, hopefully everyone's kind of gears are turning a little bit around you know, making information more accessible. You mentioned that big policy procedure manual. Imagine a new employee starting instead of having to kind of go through that. They could just ask questions as they come up to a chat bot that maybe pulls them to the right part of the doc. Or, you know, Megan mentioning maybe these long research papers and being able to quickly find the information I need or a summary of those. Um, I think one example Megan brought up before was, you know, Star Wars. And I know Megan and I have talked about this example before, but kind of translating, you know, maybe an activity, whether that's sand tray or, or or some other therapeutic activity to, to put it in the context of, you know, maybe what appeals to a kid who loves Star Wars. I think that's one of the coolest things I like about AI is being able to kind of take something that's written in one way. So think maybe a research paper that's really complex using a lot of language that even, even us three don't come across very often in our lives and being able to, you know, you can say, Hey, explain this to me like a fifth grader, right? Give me the, the top three things. That translation of language, translation of, you know, even, you know, again, bringing Star Wars into a certain activity is something AI is really good at, um, you know, kind of going to the background of these tools. They are really trained on think like the entire internet, all of the internet's information, good or bad, is kind of in the brain uh, of these AI tools. And so they're able to make that jump between different types of languages um, and even pop culture uh, with Star Wars. So really, really cool stuff. Um, I know we're coming about to the end of time here. This has been a great conversation. I'm sure we could go on for hours, uh, the three of us. So, so thank you both so much. I would love to hear maybe as a closing thought where you'd like to see social work from a, an AI perspective, let's say three years from now, like where, where would you be really excited if social work was three years from now, what would it look like kind of from an, an AI perspective to you? Um, so maybe I can come to Ernesto first on, on that one. Uh, I think, I mean, so much can happen, so much has happened in the past year. So looking forward, you know, it, it's, I can't even imagine what, what might be in, in store for us, but I guess I'm I'm old enough to remember a time when as a social worker going out into the field, we had an actual like a book of maps. I don't know if anyone even can conceptualize that, but there was a book with maps in it of your local area. And we knew the address we needed to go to. So you'd get out your book and you'd 
you know, maybe highlight or a little red pen and mark your route. And then as you're driving, you'd be peeking down, trying to get to maybe a home visit or something like that, a school. And that was the book that we used. And then this thing came out, this amazing thing called MapQuest, where um, people could, I remember I went to a meeting one time, someone had showed up using these papers that they showed us, they printed out, and it was the map from the office to this other location. And we were all amazed that they were able to do this. So then, you know, after that came Google Google Maps and, and GPS. And so there's there's an evolution in just from the paper map book to where we are now with kind of um turn by turn directions and if you if the road is closed it'll reroute you or if there's traffic it'll reroute you and that's kind of how i see ai and social work like right now i feel like we're almost in our map quest era you know we have um we have tools at our disposal we have cell phones or tablets or laptops often and and there's kind of standalone programs that we can use or applications or guides cheat sheets that we can it helps us out in the field but I imagine a time when we, if and when we um, decide to integrate AI into the work, that our day-to-day -day work can kind of be that turn-by-turn -turn navigation and really adapted to any given situation, like a personalized kind of assistant as we go about our day. Not a personalized thing that does our work for us, that talks to our clients for us, but something that can adapt and adjust to our needs throughout the day and make us more efficient, make us more effective with the work that we do, and make us better social workers. And so that's kind of what, I, maybe it's wishful thinking, but I, that's kind of where I see us progressing from MapQuest to turn-by-turn -turn GPS, um, personalized um, assistance with AI coming in the next couple of years. So hope that analogy works. That's just something I, I thought about. <laughs> I think it's a great analogy. I would like to turn by turn directions for my life, for finances, for, for everything. That would be great. Exactly. So, yeah, very, very well put. And then Megan, maybe I could come over to you. Where do you want to see kind of social work and AI uh, three or so years from now if we, we look into the future? I think we're we're just starting to scratch the surface on this. So what I would like to see in the next three years is more awareness and more just discussion of it in everyday practice, right? I feel like right now, we're not still, the, the, there's some people talking about it, but it's not really across the entire profession. So what I would like to see in the next three years is that it, it is a tool that we use. It's a tool in our toolbox, just like other tools that we use. So I'd like to see just more awareness and more use of it, more use cases. I think we're going to get that in the next couple of years. And I think that even in my own research and my own studies, we're starting to see research being done, clinical trials around different, you know, uses, case uses for it. So I think that I'd like to see more awareness. And then right now, I, I think it's really able to be used on a small scale, I think I'd like to see organizations use it more, which is going to take some time because we know organizations, maybe government organizations or VA organizations, they sometimes can lag really behind because it takes, there's so many barriers. So I would like to see it used more in an organizational context for social workers. Um, and I also would like to see social workers more in the tech space, right? We have so I, I think Alex can say as someone who's not a social worker, just from learning from me, he has a much, much different perspective now seeing the social work side of things. And I think that we can bring that into tech spaces. How can we be ethical? How can we be human centered? And how can we have the best interests of clients in mind? And like I said, we are unique in that space that someone that's maybe a computer engineer does not have that perspective that we have the humanistic perspective. So I'd like to see it um, social workers more in places of tech and more in the conversations um, as we drive forward in this. Yeah. And if really quickly, if I could just piggyback on that too, Megan, I think um, that it's critical. You mentioned it a little bit earlier that these discussions happen and, and why I'm so appreciative of you two providing this platform, um, because I think our colleagues really, those who aren't there yet need to open their minds to AI because it's here and if we are not involved, actively involved, you know, in those rooms where the technology is being developed or at those tables where policies are being um, developed, you know, if we just stick our heads in the sand and, and wish that it goes away, 
those decisions are going to be made without us. And then we're going to be left with a product, with a service, with something that's not reflected by what we need it to, you know, it doesn't have what we need it to have. So these discussions, I think, are critical so that people can open up their minds and put themselves in positions, whether it's just locally or on a larger stage, that can impact how AI is developed that's reflective of the needs of social workers. 100% agree. Yeah, and I think that's a, a great way to to end it, Ernesto. And we look forward to, to hopefully many more of these conversations in the future, um, both with you and just about you know kind of all the changes um, that that we're going to be seeing in this field. You know, it's only been you know I think less than a year since Chat uh, GPT kind of broke on the scene and really again made all of this super visible to to everyone. And it's amazing how much has happened in a year. So hopefully, um, yes, Ernesto, so social workers should get that seat at the table, really help shape these tools, and that'll get us in a much better place you know, as we look a few years from now. So Megan, Ernesto, thank you so much for a great conversation. Um, again, for everyone listening or watching, please check out the description. Um, we'll link a bunch of the kind of tools mentioned today, as well as Ernesto's book. So please do check that out and definitely just keep learning in this space, keep experimenting, keep trying things. Um, it is coming and, and we want to, as social workers and as humans, be a part of how these tools get built. Um, so thank you both again. We really appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you.